Hey guys, welcome back to the Perlworks channel. My name is John. I'm getting started on another apothecary cabinet, similar to the one I made last year. This one's going to be made out of solid mahogany. Uh, so these are the five mahogany boards I'm going to use to make the outer casework. I should be able to get all the parts for that, and I'm going to be using some pre-laminated spruce uh, panels for the inside dividers with some mahogany edge banding. Uh, so let's get started. I got all my material chopped down at the miter saw, and I'm going to bring it to the planer to get two smooth faces, and then over to the joiner to get some straight and square edges. Oftentimes, small joiners are knocked because they can't really handle long material due to the fact that the beds are pretty short. But similar to the fact that somebody with a hand plane can joint an edge, even if it's a number four plane, you can still get a nice edge with this small of a joiner. You just have to know where to remove material, and once you get everything relatively straight, you can make one final pass that's ready for a glue up. A few of the boards were left with some saw marks, so I just used my Stanley number four to get rid of them. I'm using dowels to keep these boards properly aligned for the glue up and I'm also taking note of where the dowels on the ends of the boards are because I'm going to have to trim these to their final length and I do not want any of the dowels to be exposed. These pre-laminated spruce panels are pretty handy. They save time, money, and they're also much lighter than their hardwood counterparts. I'm just using some blue tape to attach this mahogany edge banding, which is about three quarters of an inch thick, and I left it slightly wider than the panels, and I'll come back here with a flush trim bit to get everything flushed up. There's not much surface area for this router to ride on, so I use my offhand to act as a makeshift edge guide so that the router doesn't tip. I bought this Jet 2244 drum sander specifically for this project. These panels are 16 inches wide and over the capacity of my planer. I figured a drum sander would be a versatile tool to have in the shop and it's something that I've always wanted. It's pretty expensive but it does the job well and I think will expand a lot of the projects that I can take on now. Once again, I'm using dowels to get the joinery cut for this. This is just the left two corners of the cabinet. After I cut the dados in, I can do the right side. Alright, so I got all the material thickness down to about three quarters of an inch after running it to the drum sander. Now it's time to get started on my dados. If you guys saw my last apothecary cabinet build, you'll know that I had a couple issues with the dados. Some of them were not aligned properly so that led to some of the dividers being out of square. So instead of using one jig that I slide from dado to dado, I'm going to build one jig for each panel that will have all the dados spaced properly ahead of time. So I'm going to do that right now and build one for each side. I built a total of two jigs, one for the short sides and one for the long sides, which includes the dividers. The dividers and long sides can share the same jig, I just have to offset it for the dividers. I use some MDF with some hardwood edge banding to act as my guides for the bearing I'm a bit. And I also had an offcut from my material to mimic the thickness of my dividers. It was really important to get the first piece nice and square because the rest of them will reference off of those. The top three rows will be three inch tall drawers. So these spacers here are trimmed to three inches wide, which will correspond to the spacing between the dados. The bottom two rows will be seven inches and eight and a quarter inches, and they'll have corresponding spacers as well. You can see that the jig slips over the pieces nice and snug and can be clamped down to the workbench. I used a pretty simple pattern bit with a bearing on the top to get all these dados cleared out. There's a half inch in diameter, so I had to make a pass coming down and a pass coming up. This was pretty quick, and I like how they turned out. It was much simpler than the last time. And you can see on this jig here, this is for the long sides, so each panel is spaced out 11 inches, which is how wide each drawer will be.
After getting the rest of the dados cut, as well as the rest of the joinery, I can get the main casework glued up. I used Type on Extend because this was going to be a pretty hectic glue up with all four sides as well as all the dividers having to be glued up at the same time. This went pretty smoothly and didn't take too long, but I was still glad I used this glue. I spent a good amount of time working on dry fits and I used these little pieces to slide into the dados so that I could clamp against them. I don't have clamps that can go this long of a span, so these little pieces came in handy. After that glue up was dry, I could get the short dividers cut. If you saw my last video, you saw how I struggled with a few of the dividers because of the dados being out of line. These ones were nice and square and all the dividers slid in pretty easily. With the casework done, I could shift gears and get started on the drawers. I want to incorporate a grain match across the width of the piece, and for that reason I made sure to label all of these pieces accordingly so I would not mix them up. The top three rows will come from the same book match panel that will be about 9 or 10 inches wide, and the fourth and fifth rows will come from their own book match panels that will be 7 inches wide and 8 and a quarter inches wide. I'm getting the drawer pieces ripped to their final length, which will be the height of the drawers. These drawer sides and backs are made of soft maple, and here you can see the drawer fronts for the top three rows come from the same wide panel. With all 30 drawer fronts cut to width and fit into their individual cubbies, I could move on to the drawer joinery. I'm going to be using half blind lock joints again, which I've done in the past, and I've also made a separate video detailing the setup which is pretty simple if you want to give it a shot. It's really just three cuts at the table saw, two on the drawer fronts, and one on the drawer sides. For the rear end of the drawers, I'm going to be using a simple housing joint, and I can move on to gluing up all of these drawers. Before gluing these up, I made sure to sand all of the inside surfaces up to 220 grit. My clamps were a bit of a limiting factor and created a bottleneck here. I was only able to clamp up four to five of these drawers at a time, so this took a couple of days. These drawers were just too wide for my vise, so I had to add some stops on either side to make do. I used my Lee Nielsen block plane to get all these drawers to fit nice and snug. In the end, this took a good amount of time and was pretty tedious because I'm not that great with hand planes, but this is the best way to get this job done. The base is just about identical to the last one I built. It just has slightly longer stretchers on the short side to compensate for the deeper cabinet. I didn't run into any issues like I did last time with these dados, but I still felt it necessary to add these screws just as a precautionary reinforcement. After getting everything sanded up to 220 grit, I could get started with stain and finish. The client wanted this piece to be a little bit darker to match their furniture, so I added some red mahogany stain to do just that. After the stain, I added a single coat of shellac to seal in the stain, and then I could move on to adding some wipe on poly. I did the wipe on wipe off method and added about 5 coats to all of the surfaces. I did the same thing for the drawers and afterwards I added some paste wax for a nice smooth finish. Hey guys, thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I just put some finishing touches on the cabinet here. I put some paste wax on all of the outer surfaces, as well as the bottom of the drawers and the drawer dividers. This is going to make sure that the drawers slide in and out a little bit more smoothly. I also added some brass hardware from Lee Valley. These top three rows have smaller poles, whereas the bottom two rows have a slightly larger pole. I'm pretty pleased with how the proportions turned out, as well as the grain match and continuous grain across all the drawers. The overall uh, dimensions of this cabinet are about 6 feet long, 35 inches tall, and 16 inches deep. The last cabinet I built was about 12 inches deep, and you can tell by the sheer weight of this thing how much of a difference that really makes. 4 inches 
extra on a cabinet doesn't seem like that much, but with how many different parts there are on this thing, it really did make a big difference. As well as the fact that there's nine more drawers, that's just a lot more wood. We're gonna have to take all of the drawers out of this just to move it. I'm gonna move this into my house until the client comes to pick it up, and hopefully they like it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And here's some finished photos of the cabinet. Thanks for watching.